In this video, we're going to focus on finding higher order derivatives. So let's say if we have the function f of x and it's equal to 3x to the fifth power plus 2x cubed minus 6x plus 4. And in this problem, go ahead and determine the second derivative of the function. Well, we need to find the first derivative to begin. So the derivative of x to the fifth, using the power rule, is 5x to the fourth. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of x is 1. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So this is going to give us 15x to the fourth. 2 times 3 is 6. And so this is the first derivative. Now. We need to differentiate this expression one more time to get the second derivative. So if we differentiate x to the fourth, that's going to be 4x cubed. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. So the second derivative is going to be 15 times 4, which is 60. And 6 times 2 is 12. So it's going to be 60x cubed plus 12x. Now let's try another problem. Let's say that h of x is x squared cosine x. Go ahead and determine the second derivative of this function. Now for this problem, we need to use the product rule. The derivative of f times g is going to be the derivative of the first part, f prime plus or times the second part plus the first part times the derivative of the second part. So we could say that f is x squared and g is cosine. So if f is x squared, f prime has to be 2x. And if g is cosine, g prime, the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. So using this formula, h prime of x is going to equal the derivative of the first part, which is 2x, times the second part, that's cosine, plus the first part, which is just f or x squared, times the derivative of the second part, which is negative sine x. Now, we could factor the expression, or we could leave it like this. Right now, it's best to leave it the way it is. So we have 2x cosine x minus x squared sine x. Now let's go ahead and find the second derivative. So we're going to have to use the product rule twice for this term and for that one. So for the first term, let's separate it into two functions. So this is the first part. That's f. And here's the second part, g. So h double prime is going to be the derivative of the first part. The derivative of 2x is 2. And then times the second part, which we're going to leave the same, cosine, plus we're going to keep the first part the same, that's f, times g prime, the derivative of the second part. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now let's focus on x squared sine x. So let's say this is f, and this is going to be g. So the derivative of the first part, x squared, is 2x times the second, and then plus the first part, x squared, times the derivative of the second part, which is cosine. So now let's rewrite everything. So we have 2 cosine x minus 2x sine x, and don't forget to distribute this negative sign, so minus another 2x sine x minus x squared cosine x. So it looks like we can combine like terms. So the final answer is going to be 2 cosine x minus 4x sine x minus x squared cosine x. So that's h double prime. 
Now let's say if f of x is equal to the square root of x. And we need to find a third derivative, f triple prime of x. How can we do so? So go ahead and try that problem. Now first, we need to rewrite the expression. So the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. And let's use the power rule. So keep in mind, the power rule is n x raised to the n minus 1. So it's going to be 1 half x raised to the 1 half minus 1. Now, 1 half minus 1 is basically 1 half minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1 over 2. So this is the first derivative. Now, I wouldn't recommend rewriting it and simplifying it yet until you find the third derivative. So let's go ahead and find a second derivative while it's in this form. So the derivative of x to the negative 1 half, that's going to be negative 1 half x and then negative 1 half minus 1. Now 1 half times negative 1 half, that's negative 1 fourth. And negative 1 half minus 1, think of negative 1 half minus 2 over 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So this is going to be x raised to negative 3 over 2. Now let's find a third derivative. So using the constant multiple rules, it's going to be negative 1 fourth times the derivative of that expression. So that's negative 3 over 2 x raised to the negative 3 over 2 minus 1. Now, negative 1 times negative 3, that's going to be positive 3. And then 4 times 2 is 8. Now, negative 3 over 2 minus 1, or negative 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2, that's negative 5 over 2. So this is the answer. All we need to do is simplify it or rewrite it. So right now, the third derivative is equal to 3x to the negative 5 over 2 divided by 8. Now, to make the negative exponent positive, we need to move the variable to the bottom. So it's going to be 3 over 8x raised to the positive 5 over 2. Now, we can convert this into its radical form. So it's 3 over 8 square root x to the fifth power. Now, we could still simplify this expression further if we want to. x to the fifth is x to the fourth times x. And the square root of x to the fourth, keep in mind the index number is 2, so it's 4 over 2, which is 2, so it's going to be x squared. That's the square root of x to the fourth. Now, we could still rationalize the denominator if you want to. So if we multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of x, we're going to have 3 square root x over 8 x squared times the square root of x squared, which is x. And x squared times x is x cubed. So you can write your answer as 3 square root x divided by 8 x cubed if you want to fully simplify it and rationalize the denominator at the same time. Now let's work on one more problem. Let's say if you're given the second derivative and it's 5 over x squared. Go ahead and determine the fourth derivative of the function. Now first we need to rewrite the expression. So I'm going to move this to the top. So this is the same as 5x to the negative 2. So we already have the second derivative. Let's find a third. So we need to find the derivative of 5x to the negative 2. So it's going to be 5 times the derivative of x to the negative 2, which is negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. And so 5 times negative 2, that's negative 10. So the third derivative is negative 10x to the negative third. So now we need to find the fourth derivative. So it's going to be negative 10 times the derivative of x to the negative third, which is negative 3x to the negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. 
A negative 10 times negative 3 is 30. So we have 30x to the negative 4, which we can rewrite as 30 divided by x to the 4th power. And so if you're given the second derivative, you need to differentiate it two more times to get to the fourth derivative. And so that's just the basis of higher order derivative problems. You just got to find the second, third, or fourth derivative.